I've got the brand new Golf Pride Reverse Taper Putter Grip in my hands today. We're gonna to put it to the test and we're gonna see should you be changing your putter grip. Now Golf Pride are known for having a massive range of full swing grips. So there literally is a grip for every golfer. Now going into the putter grips, we have the brand new Reverse Taper. Now it is a different design than your traditional putter, which would be slightly thicker at the top and then narrow at the bottom. This, however, is the reverse. So slightly narrower and then get thicker as you go. Now, there are three models available. You have the pistol, you have the flat, and you also have the round as well. And you come in two different sizes. So you have medium and large as well. Now, for me, I've gone with the medium pistol and I have to say immediately it fits really nicely in the hands. You can see you've got the little kind of red marks here, which are quite a nice little marker. So you know where to kind of put your thumb so you can kind of make sure that grip has been re repeated every single stroke. All right, so what we have here is, it's not your traditional kind of rubber design, it's polyurethane. Now, what that's allowed Golf Pride to do is save weight. So it's gonna be very, very well balanced. So when you're making your strokes, everything's gonna feel very well, really nicely weighted. And it's gonna return that part of face, obviously, back to that neutral spot and it's gonna make you have a nice balanced pendulum stroke as well. Now we teamed up with Matthew Johns from the London Putting Club and we went through a drill which is gonna help just get that ball starting on the starting line whilst using the brand new Golf Pride reverse table grip. We're here with Matthew Johns from the London Putting Club and he's basically gonna tell me how bad my putting is but we're using the brand new Golf Pride reverse table grips. So Matthew, thank you for thank you for joining us. Absolute pleasure, let's um, see what you've got. Let, let's, see, let's see how bad this is. So. Um, if you just want to kind of go through this drill first and, and basically tell me how this is going to improve my start line, that'd be, that'd be great. Yeah, so just chatting before we, we got going there, you mentioned that you feel your touch is quite good um, and that potentially start line would be the area you'd look to want to improve yeah, your putting. Yeah, absolutely. So we've got a small little device here. It's got a mirror on it, so it'll mm -hmm. give you a little bit of feedback on eye line and those kind of factors. But probably more importantly, a little gate here yeah. is actually giving you one degree margin of error. It's making me a little bit nervous trying to get a ball, well, that's ball okay. through that small <laughs> space. But, um, Plenty of room in there. So fundamentally, this is going to kind of tell you the truth about your stroke. Okay. The, the beauty in some ways of having a little device down here that allow you to get feedback is firstly that when you put the putter down you've got an edge to square the putter against so mm -hmm. we can be quite certain that you've aimed the putter pretty well right okay the, the little t-pegs at the front there will then start to give us some feedback on did the ball go through the gate or not so if you yeah. can aim it well and not get it through the gate there must be something dynamically within the stroke that's impacting and that's where mm -hmm. we can look as a coach i could look at you technically mm -hmm. we could look into the grip and its profile and shape and see whether things in there tweak it so yeah. i think if we hit a couple of putts and have a little look, what's yeah, and and just and just on that, in in terms of, of what you see on the day to day, like how important is you know your your putter grip, especially with little putts like this, would you say? Yeah, absolutely huge. I think it's it's your only point of contact with the club. So, so if like we look that. there, we had a slight right right bias. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, the, the grip is your only point of contact with the club, so it's going to have a huge bearing on how you rotate the face and accelerate the head. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, particularly in your case, if you mentioned that you feel like start line's potentially the issue. Yeah. Yeah, so nice there, straight out through the gate. A blind we'll squirrel finds a nut every once in a while, don't that? <laughs> we can see the <laughs> putt broke perfectly there. Yeah, it did. One thing I guess I would say on that is, things I see with putting, like everyone comes to me and says they want to be more consistent. If yeah. you think that we've hit two putts, the first one missed, it would be easy to change lots of things because it missed, but fundamentally, if you want to be consistent, at some point you do have to try and settle on something. Yeah, absolutely. So I think it's, don't become too reactive to a single putt mm -hmm. is probably an important message, I think. But if you yeah. do have a pattern of, well, if it's five in a row that have all hit that right tee peg, then yeah. obviously there's something there that we would need to think about from a, a coaching or a grip aspect to say, well, what could we do to manage that a little bit better? Yeah, it's, it's, such, it's such a nice little drill, actually. It's quite easy as well. And I guess if you don't have one of these, you could put two tees and then have a tee kind of at the back. 100%. You could, you, even on the carpet at home, you could just sort of a grip length in front of your golf yeah. ball, pop a couple of golf balls down, just slightly wider than the ball that's going to pass through it. Yeah, nice. So we'd look there and get started and through the line, but probably a little bit too much too speed. Too much speed. Yeah, so we've, space. we've deliberately set it here on a braking putt, so it forces yeah. you to be aware of your speed as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's a really simple exercise that you can do on a green or on the carpet at home, particularly through a UK winter. It allows you to at least keep some maintenance work on your stroke. Yeah, it's going. quite it's, it's quite good as well. I think, um, you know, you said, said earlier in one of the, the other drills we were doing, it's like, um, you know, it's very easy to, once you get the hang of it, you obviously start getting the ball, but ball through the through the gate but actually setting yourself on a slight break yeah. instead of yeah. you know just the straightest yeah. putt and just going one after another yeah absolutely. kind of put yourself in that 
more of a, a challenging kind of on course kind of totally. yeah, uh, so position as well. Absolutely that, you know, you can you can stand on a driving range with a seven iron and get into a great rhythm of hitting shots, but yeah. you get onto the first hole and your first shot with a seven iron, the ball's below your feet and you're hitting it uphill into the wind. It's a mm -hmm. much more difficult, uh, much different challenge, I guess, isn't it, to, yeah, exactly. to that on the range. So you need a bit of both for sure. Absolutely. I think exercise like this can just try and link that together and maybe speed up some of that process. So. And and with, we spoke about it again on, on a slightly different drill. And obviously with this, you know, this is not a, you know, a big gap to get the ball through. Mm. Even for your higher handicappers, would you recommend even that kind of little little gate to get through? Yeah, players I work with. So that, that gate we've got, there's one degree. Okay. That's about the edge of the hole at 10 feet. Um, that would be where I'd be trying to work with players to try and keep it pretty tight. Yeah. I want to try to encourage you to, to sort of narrow down that focus. So even if it does slip outside that a little bit when you're on the course, mm -hmm. it's still really usable in terms of holding putts. And yeah. I think if you give yourself too much leeway, yeah. there's never any focus coming in. And I think your practice needs to be challenging. So I think there's an element there of having that in position. Yeah. It's going to force you to get quite fine tuned in your practice, which in, mm -hmm. in a block environment, you should be able to, yeah, to absolutely. a degree. And ultimately then if you can't, that's where you maybe need to look at the intervention with your technique or, or your club or yeah. your grip or whatever you're doing from there. So. Yeah, I have to say it's like, since put, putting this gr grip on though as well, it does feel pretty comfortable. Obviously I've never had a reverse taper grip before, which is very new. Oh, and as I was saying that, I'd block again. But that seems to be the tendency, yep. especially with a right to left putt. With someone who's right-handed, you are. I find I will push it. Yep. And the same thing if it was a left to right, I'd probably feel like I wanted to hit it a little bit left. Yeah. So I'm not going to miss it. Yeah. On the on yeah, the low side of the hole. Absolutely, I think that's putting's version of playing in crosswinds, isn't it? Everyone's yeah, exactly. got that wind. They stand on the tee box, and because they know they curve the ball right, the second the wind's off the left and the trouble's on the right, yeah. it's panic stations. And again, trying to isolate that down so your your start line can be as neutral as possible actually yeah. allows you to get onto a breaking putt. And actually, you've got to then learn to read it a bit better and match the speed in, which ultimately it's kind of helping the whole system to become a bit better rather than yeah. relying on a couple of small errors adding up to something that works. I think yeah, in absolutely. terms of sustainability, it's a bit more long term. So. And then in terms of distance from the hole, obviously we have this at six foot here. Would you yeah. would you keep it at that kind of distance or would you go a little bit further back with it? Yeah, you can move it out really. I think, you know, one degree work is the margin of error on a 10 foot putt. Okay. So I think. Once you get beyond 10 feet, holding putts becomes really hard anyway. So yeah. I'm not sure you need to be so bogged down in your start line from there. So I would tend to use these drills 10 feet and in and certainly yeah. eight feet and in primarily. Um, yeah. Almost as a bit of a, just a regulator for how well your technique's performing for that moment. Yeah, And absolutely. then move into some other performance, green reading and, and touch type stuff. From yeah, because so. I guess after that 10 foot, it's all kind of pace control really, isn't it? Yeah. So. yeah, certainly the closer into the hole you get, the more your start line becomes the prevailing factor in whether you hold the putt or not. Yeah. And then the further away you get, you want to start to feel that you're working more in terms of touch and, and those kind of factors. So. Yeah, so in terms, so let's try. Yeah, good. Oh, we went through, so we just missed. We'd look at that there, you know, that would be the, the putting equivalent if you've hit a good putt that's missed, so it must be a misread. Yeah. You know, we could look there and say that potentially, I mean, there's quite a bit of wind just started gusting up there. That yeah, can so have it's kind impact. of keep, keeping the ball out just yeah, that, that 100%. extra it can kind have of a like big revolution. Impact. Yeah, we, we set that up an hour or two ago and it, it was pretty calm then and things change. You've got to be able to react to that as a golfer. But I think it always boils down to like, well, what can you control? If you can hit it through there every time, yeah. you can be pretty confident on the course that it's only did I read the putt properly, was my speed appropriate as to whether you hold the putt or not. Yeah, absolutely. So let's try and, let's try and finish on a high. There we yeah. go. Perfect. And we'll stop there. Matthew, thank you very much for your time. Pleasure. Absolute pleasure. Okay, so we are not in Sota Grande anymore. We are back in Glasgow. We're in the office, but I'm gonna go through the drill that Matthew Johns was going through with me in Sota Grande. Now, it's a little bit different, but because we're indoors, you can you can do this drill indoors. Now, what I've done is I've made a makeshift alignment aid. So I'm working on my start line, similar to what we were using. Obviously it's not reflect, reflective like the glass one is, but what you wanna do is basically get yourself a Sharpie, black line down the middle of an A4 bit of paper, and then give yourself a cross uh, along the, the middle or kind of just off center. And then after that, you wanna make sure you've got a ball at the front. I've got five piece here. So just put one on either side of that right there. Now that's probably, you can make it as hard or as easy as you like, but that's probably about bang on. Now you can obviously use T-pegs if you're doing it on the putting green outside. We're in the office. We're in the boardroom right now. 
Um, the stimp on the floor is probably about 15, it's lightning quick, but I now have a nice little alignment thing which I can practice while I'm on my lunch break and I've got the faithful coffee cup at the bottom there. Absolutely stunning. So essentially all we're, all we're doing is working on start line. I'm just trying to get the ball through this little gate here and get it working on its way. The line in the middle of the paper gives me the ability to use that alignment that I already have in my putter to make sure I've got it pretty much centered to then try and hit putts through this wee gate. There we go, one and done. You can do this at home as well. So as you can see from that six foot marker, a, a really great drill with the little mirror board there. Now, if you don't have one, you can obviously, like we discussed, you can put two tees either side and a tee at the back just to make sure you're getting that ball starting on that desired line. Now I have to say, this feels great in the hand. I did feel very confident. Now, usually I would miss a lot of my putts to the left. And if anything, I was hitting them pretty much on my start line maybe just a fraction to the right as well. But it's definitely, I'm definitely excited to use, use this uh, kind of going on further this season and just see how much my putting improves as well. Now, obviously you have three different models. You've got two different sizes. You've got medium and you've got large as well. There is something there for everyone in my opinion. Um, I do really like how they feel in the hands. And the only thing I can say is get one in your hands, try it. You'll be surprised just how good this feels. But I've been James from Bunkered. We'll see you next time. <laughs>